What are markets telling us right now? Because we continue to hear this hawkish Fed speak that there's no such thing as a pivot, and yet markets don't seem to be reacting that badly. Yeah, I mean, we are, we are in a strange place. Uh, one could say that of the entire year, actually. But uh, here, I, I think, you know, it's really like the, the, the three or maybe more blind men feeling the elephant. Uh, and, and what you get is short, short end rates are, in fact, reacting to the, uh, you know, continued uh, hawkish Fed speak, uh, recognising that near term, uh, there is uh, less chances of the Fed uh, you know, uh, capitulating from its from its hawkish stance, uh, much less reversing. Uh, the longer end yields, however, I, I think may have, uh, to some degree, reacted to uh, slow down risks further out, as well as softer oil prices that we've seen. Uh, and equity markets appear to believe that they are in, they are in Goldilocks land, where uh, mm. the ISM results are taken to be, uh, you know, the the chance of averting a recession, yet not having a Fed so hawkish that they they are scared. Uh, so that's where we are, I suppose. Uh, the dollar also seems to be a little bit lost right now, uh, struggling for direction. Where is it headed? And, and what would the market repercussions be if we continue to see more strength as we saw earlier this year? Well, I think our, our starting point for the dollar is we can see that Q3 for the dollar uh, was always going to be a lot more volatile. Uh, but for, uh, you know, for, for all intents and purposes, I, I think it would be misguided to think that uh, the, the bullish treats in the dollar are done for. Uh, because uh, we, in, in Q3, not only is the Fed going to continue to be, as uh, uh, you know, uh, Fed President uh, Kashkari said, uh, uh, you know, laser-focused, uh, on, on, on inflation, but also we must bear in mind that uh, the quantitative tightening uh, in, in terms of maturities will step up as well as in terms of uh, targets may double to 95 billion a, uh, a month. And, and that ought to feed into, uh, uh, you know, bouts, at least bouts of dollar strength. What that means is that whatever relief we've seen coming through uh, in, in emerging currencies, commodity currencies, particularly, uh, including emerging Asia currencies, those could prove to be short-lived. Uh, and we probably haven't uh, seen the, 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 the back of uh, uh, bullish dollar stressing currencies further, potentially uh, macro stability risks with capital outflow risks uh, attached to them as well. We saw the Treasury curve inverting, Vish, the short dated uh, end of yields also seeing a big move. Take a look at this chart when it comes to bond volatility. This part of the market remains very much elevated when it comes to uncertainty. In fact, we're sitting at about 2020 highs. Do you see that persisting as long as this is, there is this kind of coin toss uncertainty as to what the Fed will do? I, I think so. And, and I think in, in particular, uh, and as you rightly point out, a lot more volatility is going to aggregate around and crowd around uh, the, the front end of the, of the curve uh, because that's going to react to uh, what could turn out to be pretty fluid uh, Fed expectations and projections as we go through Q3 into the end of the year and, and 2023. I, I think that some bets that the Fed may capitulate a little bit more than uh, what the current dot plot suggests, those may not be misguided. But you know, uh, you know, hopes that the, the Fed is going to back down in Q3. I think I think those are a, a bit overdone. So for that reason, I think the front end of the curve is, is going to remain very volatile. And in fact, uh, interestingly, it's not that just a uh, ten, uh, ten year, two year inversion. We've also seen the Fed's preferred measure, uh, the eighteen month, three month spreads. Uh, those were fairly wide, but have come in uh, dramatically flattening. Uh, and, and those could invert as well, pointing to recession risks. And that's precisely what's going to keep the short-end volatility in play.